What's up guys? Welcome back to the Bonsai and YouTube channel. I'm Josh and today I'm going to be showing you something that's usually only available in paid courses and can change your bonsai game forever. So stick around to the end of the video because there's a lot of information. Alright, so like I mentioned in the intro of this video, this is something that I had to think long and hard about whether we give away for free or whether we put it in one of our paid courses. Because like other people, we do have paid courses. That's something that does help us pay the bills. But I believe this information is something that everybody should have. But if this video is helpful to you, do check the link out down in the description to our courses and consider getting one because that does help support us. But as I said, the reason that I did think about giving this video away for free is I've been doing a lot of talks and demonstrations and classes lately, and I've been finding out just how little people know about this subject and how much of a major role it does play in bonsai. So let's get into it. So what we're going to be talking about today is oxen and cytokinin. Now, what are oxen and cytokinin? Oxen and cytokinin are one of the many hormones that trees have. Now, like I just said, trees have many, many hormones. But oxen and cytokinin are the two most important ones to us here in Bonsai. These are the ones we can manipulate to get the growth that we want and to achieve the goals that we're going after. So one of the first things that we need to understand about oxen and cytokinin is where they live in the tree. So these two actually live opposite to each other. So the oxen lives in the apical meristem of our shoots, but its job is to grow the roots. And our cytokinin lives in the apical meristem of the root tips, but its job is to grow the shoots. Now this might sound funny that they live in the you know, shoots but grow the roots and live in the roots but grow the shoots, but there's good reason for this. Because if one of those two gets cut or damaged, the hormone that's needed to regain growth in either of those areas isn't lost off the tree. So it can be moved up to that cut site or that damaged site and it can do its job and start to regrow the damage that has occurred, or in our case, the pruning that has happened. So you can see that with oxen, for example, if oxen lived in the roots and we cut the roots, well then the hormone that we need to grow the roots back would have been cut off. So you can see why they live opposite to each other. And this is also something that allows propagation to happen. Because oxen grows roots and it lives in the tips of the shoots, once we you know, cut a, a shoot off and we put it in the soil to make a cutting, that oxen can move down into the end of that uh, shoot and start to grow roots back. Same with your air layers. So once you take an air layer, that oxen is present up in the tip of the shoot and it can move down to that cut site and begin to grow roots back. So it's actually something that we can always use to our advantage. So the next thing that we need to know about oxen and cytokinin is in a normal growing environment, they live in balance, okay? These two hormones live in balance. And when these two hormones live in balance, everything grows equally, okay? So as the shoots grow longer, the roots grow longer, and so on and so forth. And in nature, this is okay. But in bonsai, we're trying to achieve certain goals, like ramification, or growing roots back after a repotting as quick as possible. So we can actually manipulate these hormones by putting them out of balance. Once we put oxen or cytokinin out of balance either way, then it will actually move up or down the tree and move to those sites to rectify the problem. So this is where we can actually use these to manipulate and get the growth that we want on the tree. But we're going to explain all that later. I just want to go over what oxen and cytokinin are first. So if you want a more in-depth explanation of cytokinin and oxen, you can head over to our website. I'll put a link down in the description below. We actually have a blog there that fully goes into what oxen and cytokinin are, um, more scientifically than I'm going to do in this video. But for now, we're going to move on and start to teach you how you can use oxen and cytokinin to further your bonsai game. All right, so we're going to have a chat about oxen first. So like we mentioned before, oxen lives in the shoots, but it grows the roots. So the oxen can be found right here at the apical meristem, okay, right at the very end of your stem. And like we mentioned before, that if we don't do anything to the tree, we just let it grow normally, then the cytokinin and the oxen are gonna be in balance, okay? So the oxen that's available here is actually gonna travel back down this stem 
and down to the root system where it's going to help grow more roots. Okay, so that's the job of the oxen to grow the roots. So while ever it's available all over the tree, that root growth is going to be happening, especially if it's all in balance. Now, something else that you should know about oxen is while ever this is happening, on your branches, say with a leafy tree like this, um, you've got little dormant buds right in the junctions here of these leaves. This oxen will actually suppress all these little buds. So you won't get any side lateral branching, branching or anything like that. You won't get secondary branching, tertiary branching, things like that, while ever that oxen is available. So we'll teach you how to manipulate that later so you can control that. But the thing that you need to know about oxen is it travels back down the, the shoots, down into the roots to help the roots grow. And while it's doing so, it's going to be preventing any of these buds from popping out and growing. So what's gonna happen to this branch is while ever the oxen is available, cytokinin is going to be coming up and this is just going to keep growing longer and longer and longer. Now there's a situation where this is good, you're going to want this to happen. There's a situation where this is bad, you're not going to want that to happen. So we'll get on to that a little bit later. But I just wanted you to see a little bit of a, a diagram of oxen to understand that. Now we'll have a look at cytokinin. All right, now with our cytokinin, it's basically just the opposite of the oxen. So as you can see down here, we've got the base of the tree, okay, we've got the trunk, and then down here, we've just got a basic little diagram of some roots. Now, your cytokinin, much like the oxen, is down here in the root tips, okay? So while ever this is available, that cytokinin is moving up the roots into the trunk, and then growing elongated shoots all over the tree. And this is while oxen and cytokinin in are in perfect harmony, okay? So it's just growing the shoots um, and it lives down here in the roots. So you can see what both of these do now, okay? Where they live, what their jobs are. So let's just move on quickly and see what we can do to manipulate these to get the growth that you want out of your bonsai tree. Now, before we talk about specific results that we get from pruning and all that kind of stuff, I want to point out that there are two major differences here between development and refinement and how we're going to do this work. So you've probably all heard me talk about this before, especially if you've done our courses. This is something else that's super important to understand in bonsai, so definitely go and learn it. Development and refinement. Um, so we've got two completely different goals here. So under development, our goal is growing. And then in refinement, obviously, our goal is to refine the tree. Now, when we're growing, we want lots of big shoots all over the tree. We want a ton of roots, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so how we manipulate the tree is going to be much different than what we do in refinement, where we want small, tiny little branching and ramification and all that kind of stuff. So you need to understand that there is a difference. So once I start teaching you, you know, how to prune the tree and how to, you know, offset these hormones and get results, just think about whether you're in refinement or development and which way you want to go. Because when we're in development, we really want everything to keep elongating, get more foliage on the tree, everything to thicken up. So if we started doing the refinement work too early, we're really just putting a delay on how that tree is going to thicken up, okay? It's not going to thicken up as quickly. So, and then obviously we wouldn't, in refinement, we wouldn't want to do the development work because we'd end up with lots of long leggy branches and big leaves and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to point out that there are two clear defined goals here between development and refinement and the way that we use oxen and cytokinin is going to be different between the two of these. So just understand which stage of bonsai you are in. So now that all that is out of the way, how do we control the tree and get the growth that we want using these um, hormones, oxen and cytokinin? All right, so let's first start with oxen. So let's say we bring our branch back again that we uh, drew before. Might have to change pens here because this one's not really doing a good job. All right, we're blue now. The black one's not been so great. All right, so. Now we've got our, our branch again. With our 
We've got our shoot and then all our little leaves all the way out the branch. Okay, we've got our, all our little dormant buds inside the crutches of our leaves here. Now, if this tree was in development, we wouldn't bother cutting this. We would just let it grow long and leggy, do its thing, because the more foliage that we have on the tree, the more thickness we're going to get out of the tree quicker. Okay, so we're not going to want to start cutting this back. The only time that I recommend that you cut certain branches back in development if they're going to cause a problem like swelling, um, they're going to start shading out certain areas of the tree because all those things can obviously put you backwards in that development process as well. So you leave as much on the tree as you possibly can without causing problems if that makes sense. So that, that's development. We would just let this shoot grow, okay? Now, if we're in refinement, we don't want to let this shoot grow. We want to start getting ramification. And this is where people have trouble because they go, oh, I let my you know branches grow one year, two year, three year, but all it's doing is just getting longer and I'm not getting any ramification. I don't understand what's happening. Well, what's happening is you've got this oxen available at the branch tip, okay? And like we mentioned when we spoke about oxen, while ever that's here, all these little buds back here are gonna get suppressed, okay? Because it's traveling past them and it's suppressing them on its way down to the roots. Now what we want to happen is we want to cause an imbalance of oxen and cytokinin. Okay, if there's more cytokinin in the tree, remember, cytokinin grows shoots. If there's more cytokinin in the tree, it will come up and grow the shoots back, okay? So, let's just say we're going to cut back down to our, our first two leaves here. So we cut here, which has essentially gotten rid of that oxen that's out in the branch tip. Now that that oxen's uh, not there and it's not suppressing this, what's going to happen is from the root system that cytokinin's going to come up, okay? It's going to move into that little bud there and it'll also move up into that little bud there. And what this is going to cause is these two to become shoots now. So you're going to get this elongation here and you're going to get this elongation here and then this will eventually die back to there. And what you're gonna get is a bunch of new little leaves all up these shoots, like so. Sorry that it takes me so long to draw leaves. So, now that these have grown back, the same thing's gonna happen again. You're gonna have all these little dormant buds in the, the crutches of all these new little leaves. You're going to have oxen at the tips out here. And while ever the oxen's there, all this is going to be suppressed. You're not going to get any extra growth. So if you want to continue your ramification, you've got to come back through, cut back, get rid of that oxen once again. Cytokinin comes up again, moves into that bud there, moves into that bud there. We get growth, we get growth, comes up, moves into that bud, moves into that bud, we get growth, we get growth. And then you can see that if you just keep repeating this process, you keep getting refinement. So you can see here that unless you understand the hormones, what their job is, and how to manipulate them, chances are you haven't been getting the ramification that you've been expecting every year. You've probably just been letting your tree grow and thinking that the branches are gonna grow themselves. But unless you understand what happens here, then that ramification doesn't happen. And this is usually why you see bonsai trees out there that are you know, very leggy with no branch structure. So one quick little side tip that I will mention is when you're cutting back, you'll always hear people say, cut back to the first two leaves, okay, on any branch, which will get you the tighter ramification. But there's two things you want to consider here. Don't just take that as a hard and fast rule because sometimes you might want a longer branch and if you need a longer branch and you cut back to the first two, you might cut back too far. So you really cut back to the length where you want that ramification to start, whether that's the first two leaves, the first four leaves, whatever that may be. That's up to you, that's part of your design. But the other thing I will mention is always check in between the leaves that those dormant buds are there. Because sometimes in the first two sets of you know, leaves, maybe only the second leaf actually has a bud, the first one doesn't. 
So make sure you check that because you might cut back and then you're expecting two little branches to grow, two little side shoots, but it doesn't happen. And that's because sometimes maybe that first leaf doesn't have a bud. So just make sure that you check that before you cut back. All right, so something else that I do want to mention is we did just do an example there with you know, a very obvious leafy type tree where you can see the leaves, you can see all the little dormant buds, but this does work with everything. So junipers, okay, as you get that long elongated tail, if you cut the end of that tail off, all the little shoots behind it will get um, activated to grow. But before you do that, I suggest that you go through and you choose which one of the, um, which one of the shoots that you do want to grow, okay, so you wire your branch out, cut a bunch of shoots off and leave the ones that you want to turn into little branches. That way you're not activating them all to grow because then you're just, you know, in a losing battle and you're just going to keep getting this super bushy tree rather than ramified branches. So make sure with things like your junipers that you go through, you do all your little branch selection, okay? Cut off all the shoots that you don't need, keep the ones that you do want and then cut back and then let those ones grow and so on and so forth. And also too, this is how our black pine decandling works. So in summer, we come in, we cut off those candles that grew in spring, which obviously have the oxen in them. And then once we cut them off, we get a whole bunch of new little buds around there. So that's your oxen. So now let's take a look at the cytokinin. All right, so when we look at our cytokinin and something that I wanna point out here, our main thing that we're gonna be looking at here is what happens after repotting, okay? So, We've got, this, we've got this root ball here, okay? Solid root mass outside of the bonsai pot. And there's our trunk, let's just say. Now, with our, our root ball here, generally when we're repotting a tree, we come through and we cut, you know, sides and the bottoms off to make more room in the pot for the roots to grow. Now, what I've heard a lot in bonsai and there is a method to their madness here, so I won't completely say that they're wrong when they say this, but I will say it's not the best way to go about it. So what you'll hear a lot of people say is, after you cut your roots, you should cut the same amount of foliage off the top of the tree, which balances everything out. Yes and no. Okay, so the reason why I say no is because what they are trying to do is when you've cut your roots, what you need to do is slow down the transpiration of the tree, okay? So we know that trees lose water out of their leaves. They've got to get regain that water out of the root system, okay, out of the soil. So as the tree transpires, the roots get moisture out of the soil, bring it back up to the leaves. Now, if you've just cut the roots, that root system might only be working at, you know, 50% or... 75% whatever it is, but it'll be working in a deficit, okay? It won't be working as well as it normally does. So while that's happening, you want to slow down the transpiration of the tree so the tree doesn't struggle, it doesn't lose branches, it doesn't, you know, die if it's too hot, okay? It's transpiring too fast and it can't get that water up because the roots are being cut. So obviously, the method to their madness here when they say that is if you cut off a good amount of the foliage after you've repotted, then you've actually just reduced the amount that the tree can transpire because it hasn't got as much foliage to lose water out of, which is true. But the problem with this is, is remember when we said before that the oxen in the apical meristem of the shoots is what grows the roots back. So what happens if you come along and you cut most of the foliage off? At least, you know, um, prune all the tips because that's what you're going to prune. You can't, you know prune the insides really because then you'll just create long leggy branches that look silly. So most people come in and they just cut all the tips of the branches off. You've essentially just got rid of all the oxen that the tree needs to grow back the roots. So I definitely don't recommend that after a repot or any kind of root work on a bonsai tree, definitely don't cut the foliage. You want to leave that foliage on there so that oxen is available to grow, go down and grow the roots. What you can do instead is place that tree in a position where it's going to be less likely to transpire. So you can put it in a shady spot. You can protect it from wind. If you've got a greenhouse, perfect. You can mist it, okay, during the day when it's the hottest. You can mist the foliage just to slow that transpiration down a little bit. All these things can help to slow that transpiration down, but I definitely don't recommend cutting any of the foliage off because you want to keep that 
oxen up there so it can come down because the minute that you cut those roots and you cut that cytokinin out, now there's more oxen in the tree than there is cytokinin, so that oxen's gonna move down and repair that damage. And you want this repaired as quick as possible because this is the lifeline of your tree. So the faster you can get this repaired, then the quicker your tree can get back to work. So I can imagine that the people that uh, cut their shoots at the same time they cut their roots for that whole next growing season, they're probably behind. They're not getting results as quickly as, you know, as they could be. The tree's not responding to the work like it should be. And that's because they slowed it down. But if you can get those roots to grow back as quick as possible using that oxen, then you're going to be ahead. All right, so I hope you learned something useful for that. So just to recap, our oxen grows our roots, our cytokinin grows our shoots. While they grow in harmony together, in balance, everything just grows equally. Our shoots will grow longer, our roots will grow bigger. In development, that's a good thing. More roots equals more shoots, more shoots equals more roots, and the both of those things equal more thickness quicker, okay? So development, that's a good thing. Once we move into refinement, as the shoot grows, we need to get rid of that oxen so it stops suppressing the buds behind it, then we can get ramification. After repotting, we don't want to cut the oxen out of the tree because we want to grow the roots back as quick as possible, and oxen is what grows the roots. So instead of cutting the shoots off after repotting, treat the tree you know, to some shade, to some misting, out of the wind, all that kind of stuff, and you'll get much better results. So I just want to say thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something. Check out all the links down in the description. If you want a t-shirt like mine, you can get them down there. If you want to read more blogs, you can read them on our website. If you want to do online courses that have more videos like this one, we have a reporting course, we have a beginner's course. You can go over and check them out. That helps support us greatly and they're very cheap and they've got tons of information in them. So go and check them out. But until next time, enjoy your bonsai journey.